So bills are getting more expensive, money's even harder to come by, and despite the omnibuses that I picked up this season, I decided to start an even more expensive collecting hobby. We're both. Hey guys, it's me Marcus, aka the Mad Dog, and we're back with another video. So to kick off this season, I wanted to pick up a couple of books that had fallen by the wayside, and the first one was Superman Birthright Deluxe Edition. And as well, when I did me where to start on Superman, this was the book that everybody said that I missed out, but it's because of the fact that I just haven't read it yet. And when I look at this book, I don't have a clue why, because it's Superman, a character that I love, a 12-issue miniseries, so I can probably read it in a couple of settings, and it's written by the man himself, Mark fucking Wade. So there's no doubt in my mind that I'm going to enjoy this, apparently it's a really unique take on Superman's origin story. So despite the fact that it's going to be no surprise to me, if I have to watch Krypton blow up again, I'm really interested to see why this is such a special book. And Books Etc had this for over 50% off, so there was no way that I could turn it down, and I'm just really excited that this is entering the collection. And I kind of went a bit overboard with this first order from Books Etc, because I also included 100 Bullets Omnibus Volume 2. And I can see this being one of those series that just stealthily goes out to print, and then it's very difficult to find it. But it's Brian Azzarello who I really enjoyed, Eduardo Risso who's got this unique style, and a very lengthy Vertigo series which is something that I normally always enjoy. As well I remember when this first came out it was in about 13 or so trade paperbacks and I think I read volume 5 and volume 7 and it might have been about 13 at the time and not having a clue what was going on but I remember enjoying it which is the most important thing. So I am very excited that this is entering the collection and I'm hoping that I can do a review of it later this year. And the last book that I picked up was one that I was debating and going back and forth on for a while because it's the 52 Omnibus. Now I had the four trade paperbacks of this and I told myself for a while that I was comfortable with that but then I remembered I really enjoy 52. But this title's also responsible for making me fall in love with characters like Steel, Renee Montoya, and of course, Booster Gold. Who, in all honesty, if the guy who played Stifler doesn't get to play him in a movie, I think it's pretty much me that's got to be next in line. Like, come on, imagine it for a moment. But there's a video idea that I've had for a while that I'm determined to do as part of this year's season of events. And it's centered all around 52, so if you're looking forward to that, make sure that you're subscribed. And when I went back to this series, I fell in love with it again, so I knew I wanted it in the best format possible. I then saw a book come in stock that I knew Shadowcat desperately wanted, and that is Sonic the Hedgehog IDW Collection Volume 3. Now I've been very hot on with these books because I'm speaking from experience with series like Transformers and TMNT that you let a couple of these slide and then all of a sudden you have to pick up 10 to get up to date. And Knuckles is my favourite character so I kind of had to get this one because it's on the front cover. I know what it sounds like but I definitely didn't get this for myself, it's for my girlfriend Shadowcat, she's definitely real. I then got a very whammy shipment from the channel sponsor Organic Prize Books, JP over there has definitely looked out for me. There's been a lot of books that I had my eye on for a few months and they had this amazing 3 for 2 sale So I waited until the right time and bundled them all together But the first book that I got that I knew there was no way I was going to miss out on is the Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 2 I love this series. It was my gateway into comics. I'm so happy that we've got a second volume I'm even more happy that we've got a volume 3 on the horizon And I am really not happy that I still don't know which cover I should get. They're all just so beautiful But I cannot wait until the day until all of Ultimate Spider-Man is in the Omnibus format I still don't know if I'd sell my trade paperbacks, there's just way too much nostalgia there. And I also think my copy of Volume 1 is actually falling apart. And as soon as I saw this come in stock, I messaged JP and I begged him to put one aside for me. Because I saw how quickly Volume 1 dried up, fortunately there has been a restock since then, but I didn't even want to wait till that. So this was one of my must-buys and I'm very excited that he's finally entering the dog pound. Another book that I just knew I didn't want to miss out on, it's not even me being an event apologist, I absolutely love this series because it's House of M. Now I reviewed this last year as part of the season of events, which the timing of this is great for because we're just about to start that again. But still, I don't think there's many events that can really hold a candle to House of M. It's Brian Michael Bendis again at the time when he was just at his peak of his writing and he just dominated Marvel. I love that this includes all of the major events. I don't really know if I'm too bothered about picking up that companion omnibus, but this is where it's at and I just knew I had to get this one because I love this title so much. Sure, I do wish that the Wonder picture on the back cover would have been the DM variant because I would have loved to have got that, but still I don't really have a problem with the widescreen main cover. And when I knew that this was part of the 3 for 2 deal that Organic Price Books was running, I knew that I needed to pick this up, and thankfully it's finally entering my collection. Another one that I got as part of that 3 for 2 deal is X Factor by Peter David Volume 2. Now this was one of those titles that I read a few various issues and trade paperbacks for when it was originally being printed, but it's when I had such little knowledge about the comics universe that I didn't really have a frame of reference. I cannot wait to go back to this because even when I was younger, this just didn't feel like a regular Marvel comic. 
comic. And now that I've got a little bit more knowledge on this team and I'm more familiar with characters like Madrox, I really can't wait to see what the experience is like now. As well, I knew I had to pick this one up because I picked up volume one specifically so I could get this part of the series. But this is the part that I'm at least a bit familiar with and I cannot wait until I can jump into this again. Another one that I got as part of the three for two deal and I knew I had to get it because he might revoke me British citizenship, but it's the Knights of Pendragon Omnibus. Now yeah, you might not know a lot about this team. I only really know about it because of Captain Britain, which if you're unfamiliar with who he is, I've already done a video on that. But I just know for a fact that when this does go out of print, whether it be next week or a year from now, this is going to be very difficult to get. And I do not want that hassle, so I'm glad that this exists in the omnibus format in the first place, but I haven't really seen a lot of people picking this up. It might end up being a title that I don't enjoy at all, but I'd rather at least not have to hunt it down when it goes out of print. And with it being part of the 3 for 2, with a character that I knew I already enjoyed, I knew that I wanted to get my hands on this. I also picked up a book that I know might be controversial for some people. It wasn't part of the 3 for 2, but I just knew that I really wanted it, because it's Captain America by Nick Spencer Volume 1. And I am so excited that they've already announced a Volume 2. And that it seems like it's going to include Secret Empire, and that it's just a complete reading experience experience for Nick Spencer's time on this character. Does it make a few decisions that might have backfired and not landed as well as he wanted it to? Yeah, but at the same time I think the risks that it takes is interesting and I love the first part of this that I've already read. And you know what, 9 times out of 10 when I hear that a book's controversial it's just an immediate reaction and then you don't hear people talking about the rest of the run. So I'm excited to jump into that and see exactly how it all panned out and if Nick Spencer had a plan from the beginning. Who knows, maybe I'll end up disliking it as well, but it's got the time that Sam Wilson was also Captain America. on top of all the Hail Hydra stuff that you probably already knew about if you haven't even read this title. So either way, I am all in for this experience and I'm just very excited to have another omnibus entering the Captain America part of my collection. Another one that I picked up in a similar way to how I got X Factor by Peter David Volume 1, I got Star Wars The New Republic Volume 1. Now the reason why I got this is because I really want that second volume that contains all of the Dark Empire stuff. I've heard about that story arc for years, I even wanted the epic collection of it, but that seemed to go out of print in the blink of an eye. Marcus, you could have said light speed there, you could have made a Star Wars joke, you could have made it look like you knew what you were talking about for once. But pretty much everything from the Star Wars universe that Marvel has printed so far is something that I've really enjoyed. Even the stuff that I wasn't too keen on, I still had a great time with. And I'm hoping this is no exception. Admittedly, when Volume 2 comes out, I might skip to the Dark Empire stuff first. But if you've watched this channel before, you know I can't just have a stray Volume 2 in my collection. So I needed to pick this one up, I also thought the cover was beautiful, and I know we shouldn't judge books by them, but at the same time, look at it. Another somewhat controversial title from the exact same culprit, but I knew I had to pick it up because it's The Amazing Spider-Man by Nick Spencer Volume 1. But again, it's a similar situation because I read the first couple of issues of this because I'm such a massive Ryan Otley fan. He is one of my absolute favourite artists, and I know he doesn't do everything on this run. The story can be absolute dear, but I know if Ryan Otley's illustrating it, I'm gonna be invested, and bare minimum, it's gonna look pretty. And if I'm remembering correctly, it did feel like the first couple of issues were pretty much erasing a lot of what Dan Slot set up from the superior Spider-Man, but either way, I'm in for it, and I hope it's another case of just Spider-Man fans hating whatever the modern run of Spider-Man is. But hopefully, now that the dust has settled with this run, I'll have a good time with it, and I'm just really glad that it's entering the dog pound. And the last book that I got as part of this order from Organic Price Books, and trust me, that was a very heavy package the day it got delivered. But carrying that order up the three flights of stairs was worth it because the last book in it was the Predator Omnibus. Now I've said it before, I've always enjoyed Predator much more than I have Alien, and when this first got cancelled. I was gutted. Yeah, I've got that Dark Horse hardcover, so I wouldn't really be missing out too much. But I also believe this contains way more than that, so I'm just glad that it's finally been released. And admittedly, it does seem like Marvel's gone a bit quiet on the Predator releases. I was hoping as well that we might get some kind of Alien vs Predator omnibus. But either way, whatever they print with this character, I'll buy, and I'm glad that this is entering the collection. And like I said, the only reason why I was able to get some of these omnibuses was thanks to JP over at Organic Price Books. He's always looked out for the channel, and the website's always got great prices and offers going on, which because become even better if you use the channel's discount codes. They've got great packaging, fast shipping and amazing customer services and if you use code woof woof you'll get two dollars off your order. And if you're ordering three or more books and you want them to be delivered together make sure you use code woof woof ship it together for five percent off your entire order. Don't worry you can just copy and paste them from the description down below and you can use these codes as many times as you like. Then I realized I'm trying to be a bit more savvy with my money so unless it was a great deal I just wasn't going to pick up the book. But I did find a great deal in one of the Facebook groups that I was in 
for the two volumes of Reckless that are still needed. I recently read volume two of this series and I really enjoyed it and I just hope it can keep the momentum into these later volumes. Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips are pretty much one of those unbreakable duos. I don't think they've ever done anything bad when they're working together. So for a great price, how was I going to pass it up? And I'm just really glad that these are entering the collection. There was another book that he was selling though for a great price and because I got combined shipping, I just knew that I had to pick it up. Yeah, I'm getting my excuses in early, which is going to be really beneficial during Halloween season because it's Gideon Falls by Jeff Lemire. This is the second volume. I had volume one last year and I was waiting until this came out to read it. But Jeff Lemire is another one of those writers that I've never really disliked anything of his that I've read. But still, considering that this full series has been completed in just two hardcovers, I knew I couldn't pass this one up forever. And when I saw it for a great price, I knew I really couldn't pass it up. So make sure you're looking out for a review of this around October time. I then found another great deal on one of the Facebook groups that I'm in and it was another title that I've had my eye on for a while and that is Oblivion Song Deluxe Edition Volume 1. Now prior to last year I would have gone into this with much more confidence and said that there's never been a Robert Kirkman book that I've disliked but then last October happened and I reviewed Outcast. I am hoping that this is closer to The Walking Dead and Invincible End of the Spectrum but we all hit a pothole at some point and I feel like the goodwill that Robert Kirkman's built up from the great titles that he's been on shouldn't be diminished because of the second half of that series. So I am going into Oblivion Song with an open mind and I'm going into it pretty blind because I don't know what this is about but for Kirkman I will take that risk and I'm glad that I found this for a great price and I'm not sure some people noticed but around April I was going through a really difficult time with the channel and I couldn't figure out why and then worst of all when I did feel like I was starting to get back into it I got really really ill like I lost my voice for two weeks which makes filming videos really difficult. I'm not afraid to admit it, but I almost did completely throw in the towel because it's been over three years that I've been on this channel and I'm still struggling to find my rhythm sometimes. Shadowcat knew this, I've been very open about it, I've been trying not to hide away from it. So to try and kick me back into gear, she surprised me with Alan Moore's The Ballad of Halo Jones. For a while, I've been saying that I want to do a complete video biography on Alan Moore's career. Now that he's announced that he's retired, I feel like it's a great opportunity to do so and I want to look at everything. He's one of the most influential creators of this entire medium and I feel like that's a video that I need to do. And she's known that for a while even if I had put it on the back burner for a little bit. And admittedly it is a video that's going to take months. There's going to be research, there's going to be voiceover, there's going to be interviews that I'm going to have to listen to. But I'm glad that she surprised me with this and that it reminded me of a video that I really want to do. Another book that I picked up is Terry Moore's Echo. Now I did not know that this book was going to reprint and even if I would have heard about it I probably would have been skeptical. I'm still waiting for the UK to get some of the those Rachel Rising copies. But my good friend Adam over at Comic Bound told me that he got a notification that Read Comics has got these in stock and I immediately got my order in and I'm so glad that this has been delivered. Strangers in Paradise is one of my favourite series. It's one of the only comics that's ever made me cry. And I'm hoping that Echo's on a similar level but either way I'm just really glad that this is back in print. And if anybody knows of a decent price on the hardcover version of Rachel Rising, please let me know. And now the part of the show that most people skip through, but it's time for the Power Rangers toys that I picked up this season. First up was one that I was happy to get because it completed the main roster of this team, but it's SPD Yellow. Now for me, this will always be Decker Ranger because that was the first Sentai series that I ever watched, but either way, I am just happy to get these figures. I am not that happy about the windowless packaging. Don't get me wrong, I love the turtles, I hope they all get saved, but at the same time, Hasbro has really poor quality control. So now it's a very risky move anytime you pick up one of these. But SPD is such a great team, I love the aesthetics of their suits, and I'm just really glad that I've rounded them out. Another Yellow Ranger that I needed, that annoyed me for a completely different reason, but this time it's Lost Galaxy. Now let's play a little game of Spot the Difference. This is how I've posed my Lost Galaxy Red, and this is how I've posed my Lost Galaxy Blue. But the one that I can't pose like that is Lost Galaxy Yellow, because for some reason they did not include the extended Quasar Saber. Then why would you bother including it with every other member of the team? Don't get me wrong, I'm no stranger to Hasbro's tricks, so they're probably going to do a Stingwinger that it's going to get included with, which I'm weak enough to buy anyway. But still, it just annoys me. How do you get this close to completing the end of a team and it seems like there's no major issues and then you drop the ball with the accessories? So Hasbro, thanks for ruining my childhood dreams. I just turned myself back in my head and now I know why people don't believe I'm going to be 30 this year. The last Power Ranger that I got, which I was very happy to see get announced, was In Space Silver with his bike. Now I love this release. In Space is probably my second favourite Power Rangers team and when I saw that they released In Space Silver as part of some Walgreens exclusive which we don't have over here in the UK I knew that I was probably going to have to pay dumb prices if I wanted to finish out my In Space team. Thankfully that didn't happen and I've got a bike with him now as well which is great. The hips are a little bit loose but when I think about the other problems that Hasbro's had 
I can accept that. I then treated myself to another couple of books from Books Etc because he had great prices on them and I also felt like these might fall under the radar. First of which is one that I know will eventually go for stupid out of print prices but it's Doom Patrol by Gerard Way. Now I love what I've read of the Umbrella Academy, I can't really say that I'm a My Chemical Romance fan, I prefer Snoop Dogg. But when this got announced I was very excited because I knew that he worked on this run but I've never read anything of it. And Doom Patrol is also that team that I find really interesting but I don't have a lot of experience with. So this is a great great combination and this was available for a fantastic price regardless of any discount so I am very excited that I'm including this in my collection. Another one was Fantastic Four by Mark Miller and Brian Hitch. Now before I get into this book can you believe that these are pretty much a similar size but this is near enough double the price. But still I love this duo when they worked on the Ultimates. Brian Hitch's art is phenomenal. I know some people don't like the faces but admittedly the level of detail that's everywhere else overcompensates for that and Mark Miller might have his detractors but every time I read one of his books, I have a great time. Is it a story that's going to change my life? No. But the normally entertaining start to finish, he has wacky out there concepts that he's not afraid to see reach the full potential. And combining that with the Fantastic Four, who were just this platform to be able to do whichever weird sci-fi stories you want. And either way, I'm just really glad they sent her in the dog pound. Another one that I knew I didn't want to miss out on because I've already missed out on it once before, but it's Silver Surfer by Dan Slott and Mike Ulred. Now, it's only thanks to that Top 100 Omnibuses video that I did that I remember that this got reprinted and I still hadn't picked it up. I did not want this to slip out of my grasp again because I saw this going for stupid prices once it was out of print and it's a writer that I love, an artist that I love and I remember the first couple of issues of this very fondly but for some reason I just didn't continue with it. Now that it's in this beautiful convenient omnibus format I'm just very glad that I finally got this in my hands and who knows maybe you'll see a review of it later this year. And the last book that I picked up was again thanks to books etc and it was one that for once I convinced myself wasn't just FOMO because I've been saying it for the last couple of whale watches that if there's one book that you need to make sure that you get as soon as you can, it is the Savage Avengers Omnibus. Now I had this pre-ordered with Forbidden Planet and I made sure that I got it in before the final order cut off. And then for some reason, despite me pre-ordering it way in advance, they just did not ship it and cancelled the order. This is the first time I've ever had a bad experience with them so I'm not really going to hold it against them. But as soon as I saw it available on books etc, I made sure that I got an order in and again, I still wasn't really hopeful. But somehow, despite the fact that I still don't believe it, I am currently holding it in my hands. I am really excited that this got the Omnibus treatment. I think it's one of the most unique unique and exciting Avengers titles that's come out for years. But either way, I've known for months that I needed to get this one and I'm just very glad that that stress is over it and Nate's finally entering the dog pound. But like I said at the beginning, there's another expensive collecting hobby that for some reason I've decided to start. And you might have heard me reference it a few times, but there's one thing that I've wanted even more than this channel succeeding. Yep, that is the Hot Toys Batman Deluxe Edition. But I'd gone back and forth wondering if I needed to spend so much on one figure. So my dumb brain convinced myself to just just order one and see if I liked it. But then I saw this one and I knew there was no doubt in my mind that I needed to pick up the Iron Spider Army. Now when this got delivered, I was secretly hoping that I hated it so that I didn't have to spend more money on these. But as soon as I opened that box, I fell in love. And how could I not just look at this thing? And I know people say that you shouldn't really pose hot toys and have them in the museum stance, but if I'm going to spend this much on a figure, I'm going to make sure that it's displayed in a cool way. Yeah, the joints might loosen over time, I'm going to do me best to make sure that that doesn't happen. So I've got no regrets with this and I'm really excited that this has entered the dog pound but unfortunately it does now mean that I'm a Hot Toys collector. Which in case you didn't know means I'm going to have absolutely no money going forward. Case in point, I've kind of already bought a second one. Every time I looked at it, it was beautiful, it was stunning, but I said to myself that I can't just have an Iron Spider in my collection. I can't start and stop with just a variant so then I decided to get myself a classic suit Spider-Man. I don't think this has the same wow factor as the Iron one, but it's still absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, admittedly, I don't think this is going to be the last one that I buy, so don't be surprised if you see more of these entering my holes. But don't worry, I'm not forgetting that I'm a comics channel. But yeah, that's been my spring haul, and I'm very happy with it because I'm trying to make sure that I'm only bringing books into my collection that I know I'm going to read. And also, I know I try and wrap my videos up quite quickly, but I just want to throw a massive thank you to everybody that's still supporting the channel. Honestly, 2023 has been a rough year 
years so far with stuff happening with the cat and then the algorithm and then illnesses. I want to go back to my old mentality where if I'm gonna fail with this channel, it's gonna be because I'm shit at it and not because I'm lazy. Because I wanna make sure that I can make this channel the best it is. Maybe this video isn't gonna be the best because it's been such a long time since I filmed, which is probably the reason why I've been even more of a rambling idiot this time. By the way, I just wanna say thank you for the support and hopefully I can make you proud with the videos that I've got coming out in future. But that's the video and in the comment section below, let me know some of the books that you picked up in spring. But until next time, just make sure that you stay safe and stay mad all you dogs. Woof woof, see you at the next video.